Do you know what? At first, I was quite okay to listen to some positive feedback from Arne Slot, from all of these pundits and whatnot. But it's come to a point where I'm a little bit fed up now. Arne Slot, just keep your mouth shut for a little bit. You don't need to big us up so much. You've beaten us, no problems. Don't hype us up so much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the other side of the coin and welcome to your latest Chelsea news. As soon as you come through, smash the like button if you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Quite a lot to talk about. I want to talk about this whole situation of us losing to Liverpool. And I've been guilty of it, you know, trying to uh, talk about it. Somewhat bigging up the, the loss that we had, that we had a good performance. Ultimately, let's not forget, it's a loss. And it's not acceptable. You know, we're not, we're not, we don't want to get into a situation. Uh, we don't want to get into this territory where we are accepting of losses against big team no 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 we understand it was a good performance but let's not kid around ourselves we need to start getting back into winning ways immediately and all of these conversations about you know us we are building a nice team this that the other yes praise but we haven't achieved anything as yet we need to understand that we haven't achieved anything as yet and and all of this talk from liverpool and and Matisse is right when he says these people are little little broing us. I'm kind of getting fed up now, demeaning us, little broing us, subtle subtle way of being, you know, uh, demeaning basically, like subtly telling us you don't matter, we're not worried about you. Do you know what I mean? So it's starting to really, really become a little bit annoying for me. It starts like this. Uh, this dropped literally moments ago. Arne Slot, a lot of people in England made fun of Chelsea at the start of the season about investing so much and all of these players, uh, not in the squad, but in my opinion, in the last one to two years, really well bringing in so many talented players and now having such a strong squad with such a good manager that they will be up there in the upcoming years. That's my opinion. Look. Arne Slot, no one asked you to talk about Chelsea so much. All right? I get it. People are in the media are asking you questions. You've got to respond. You don't need to respond in such detail. You don't need to do that. Just keep it short and simple. Keep it moving. You don't see Enzo Maresca being asked about how Liverpool are doing and how they're building their squad and he's not coming up with a detailed essay. Ultimately, let's be honest. We want to be able to compete against the likes of Man City, against the likes of Liverpool, against the likes of Arsenal and so on and so forth. We're not here to be best friends and mates with them. We had a fairly good performance, but we shouldn't forget we lost. We lost at Anfield. And now when I think about it a lot more, it almost seems like Liverpool, they managed the game well. We played well, but they managed the game well as well. They weren't They weren't. They weren't too much under pressure. Yeah, it's not like the same old Klopp way, gun ho press, and they could have annihilated us like last season the way they did. It's not the same way. The, now under slot is a little bit more, you know, I, I wouldn't say mature, but it's, it's a different style. Of course, it's a different style. They're more about containment. They don't want to play the back and forth basketball style of nature of football. So, look, enough's enough. The loss against Liverpool is gone. But I need the players, the manager, everyone to know that we need to get back into winning ways immediately. If we want something substantial for this season, we don't want to end up being 8th, ninth, 10th. And it can easily be like that. It can easily spiral off like that. We don't have easy fixtures coming up. Yeah, okay. Next up in the Conference League, Panathinaikos, it won't be easy. We still need to do a job. But in the Premier League, Newcastle, Man United, Arsenal, and then the international break, it could become very, very sticky hickey. We have to be very, very careful. We have to be very careful how what we say, and, and I'm guilty of it as well, I have to admit. I, I think I've got into this false security off the back of that loss against Liverpool that everything all is all well and dandy. And look, it's not panic stations, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, I don't want to get into that, into that category where 
accepting losses is a norm. Accepting losses against big clubs becomes a norm. No, we have to keep improving. So that is the message that I wanted to put out. Let me know, ladies and gentlemen, in the comment section, how you feel about this. How you feel about Arne Slot talking, talking up Chelsea the way he is? Is it a bit of a false sense of security? Let me know in the comment section. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, breaking Chelsea freeze out. Um, Josh Achapong from both first team and development team until he agrees to sign a new contract. A lot of people are becoming very irate about this situation. I don't know where you guys get the time of the day to think about all of these things. Look, don't get me wrong. Josh Achapong looks like a talented youngster. Absolutely. But we have other things to worry about right now. We need to make sure we can compete in the Premier League. We need to make sure that we get something in the domestic cups. And we need to make sure we win the Conference League. We've got a plethora of young, talented players within the first team. I can understand why Josh Achapong is probably a little bit hesitant to sign a contract with Chelsea. <coughs> there's Reese James. And of course, there's an injury cloud on him. I get that. There's Malo Gusto as well. And every other day, we are looking for more young players. So I can understand why Josh Achapong probably feels, you know, what's my future at Chelsea, man? Am I really going to get a proper go? I get that. But I can't even be bothered at the moment to think about this too much. I know he's a talented player. I know Real Madrid are sniffing around. I know that he could potentially go to Real Madrid and become a superstar. I get that. But we have a lot of young players that can turn into superstars as well. So, look, for me, if this brother is not convinced about the Chelsea project, so be it. We move on. I don't understand the, all the hoo-ha in social media by our fans feeling so upset and annoyed about it. Well, what do you want us to do? Sell Reese James. Sell Malo Gusto. Josh Achepong plays on the right side. Where is that opportunity going to come from? Chelsea left bewildered after believing they had agreed a new contract with Josh Achpong, only to be told it would not be signed. They will seek to find a solution with him still. So look, still maybe there's something that can be done. Um, we apparently have a contract in place for him. We have included him in the preseason. He has been part of the domestic cups here and there as well. It's up to him now. <clears throat> if he doesn't believe in the Chelsea project, then then that's it. There's not much we can do about it. Let me know once again what your thoughts are, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to Josh Achapong. Next up, Shakhtar Donetsk General Director Sergei Palkin claims Chelsea have no clue how to use Mudrik. Yet another one coming up and telling us we have no clue how to use Mudrik. Potter had no clue. Lampard had no clue. Pochettino had no clue. And now Mareska has no clue. When you got four managers that has no clue, yeah, I'm starting to think maybe it's the plan. I'm starting to think maybe it's the plan. Let's be honest. He's been given enough time to succeed at Chelsea. But for some reason, this guy simply cannot click. Yes, in recent times, he's looked better, of course. But now he's not even part of the squad, which makes me think he's not part of the Chelsea plan. Whether he's going to be sold, whether he's going to be going out on loan, we shall see in the next transfer window. But his future at Chelsea Football Club isn't a fault of Chelsea. The only fault that Chelsea probably had with Mudrik is, why did you buy him? He was on his way to Arsenal. He's, in fact, today, right now, watching Arsenal versus Shakhtar Donetsk at, at the Emirates, which is fine. I mean, you know, he's gone out there and supporting Shakhtar. Maybe he's pondering how life might have been at Arsenal. But it's not our fault. Sergei Palkin goes on to say, you don't need a Ferrari if you don't know how to drive it. A normal car will do. If you buy a Ferrari, you should think about how to handle it. That's my opinion on Mudrik at Chelsea. The man is comparing Mudrik to Ferrari. Look, I I'm not going to sit here and disrespect Mudrik. I think he's there's a good player there. But to say that he's of a level of a Ferrari, yeah, that's mad. That is mad. Mudrik is no Ferrari. Mudrik is, is, is a decent player. Maybe he's slightly above average player, but he needs a lot of work. You, you do need, you know, someone to, to handhold him because... He might, Sergey Sergey might think that he's a Ferrari, but he ain't operating like one. He still needs to 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 act like he might have the body of a Ferrari, but the engine inside is definitely not a Ferrari engine. 
that engine needs a lot of work. So that's my that's my thought on, on that matter. Andre, uh, Andres T Townsend, I think Kaisida and Lavia have got it all. They can break up the play. They can tackle and they can uh, play forward passes as well. I like the balance of the side. Enzo Fernandez will have to find his way back in the team, 100%. Look, one of the one of the things that I want to see from Enzo Maresca moving forward, now that there's no one injured, thanks God, touch wood, there's no one injured, no rehabilitation program, right? I don't want to see Enzo Maresca, especially in the Premier League, don't be messing around with the lineup anymore. Pick your strongest team. I don't want to come out of the match thinking, oh, the midfield balance wasn't there, or oh, the pe personnel in the in the defense wasn't there. Kukure is going to be back. Reese James is back. One game a week. Hopefully he stays fit. Rome, Romeo Lavia, one game a week. Hopefully he stays fit as well. Make the tough decisions. In midfield, Enzo Fernandez needs to be seeing bench from now. We have clearly seen Caicedo and Enzo uh, Caicedo and Romeo Lavia is the best double pivot right now. We've seen it firsthand against Liverpool how good they can be. Individually brilliant, together excellent as a partnership. Enzo Maresca, don't try and navigate away from that. Don't try and fit Enzo Fernandez. Let him let him work on his game. Let him work on his game. Let him play the conference leagues and let him come off the bench and work on his game. I know, yeah, it's mad. 100 million player coming off the bench or playing conference league. Yeah, but but that's that's where we are. We need the right balance in midfield. And right now, Romeo Lavia and Moses Caicedo gives us the best balance. And in defense, Kukurea should come in. Levi Cowell stays. Reese James needs to be right back. But as a back three, when, when Kukurea goes inverts, Reese James can, uh, becomes an RCB. And then you pick that other CB. It's probably going to be Wesley Fofana, no problems. But you stick with that back line. Let's not, let's not tweak too much with that. Let's keep that, the Premier League back line, and keep working on it. So I want to make sure that we, we're not messing about. We need to bounce back and win against Newcastle in the Premier League or else things could spiral down very, very quickly. Next up, Glenn Johnson and Cole Palmer. On Cole Palmer, we are lucky that there is a lot of world-class players in the Premier League, but everybody would want Cole Palmer in the team. I don't think there are many better players going forward at the moment than Cole Palmer. I think his best position is in that number 10 role. He can wander around, find gaps, and get on the ball in dangerous areas. He needs to be the focal point right in the middle because it allows him to be as dangerous as possible. He's a lot more dangerous there in that role. Of course, look, yes, Make him the focal point, make him the number 10, give him all the you know ball all the time so he can dictate play. But I want to say something. Quality teams or even any other team in the Premier League, no one's a Mickey Mouse team in the Premier League. They would have seen what Liverpool did to Cole Palmer. They tried to shut his game down and a lot of teams will do that. And Liverpool has also given, given us the indication that besides Cole Palmer, Liverpool don't rate any of our other players. They know he's our main guy and they've marked him well. Keep him quiet. The rest, we don't give a diddly squat about. It, it tells us something. It, it gives us a message to the Chelsea fan base that Cole Palmer is the straight-up outstanding player of the team. Everyone else can be replaceable and we should be thinking about better because the opposition themselves are saying we don't care about man-marking others because they're not... They're not scary for us. But this guy is scary. We're going to lock him down. And then there goes there goes all your plans. Kalas. So Enzo Maresca needs to get the best out of others and lift. Yes, I know Nicholas Jackson has been scoring. But he needs to he needs to up his game a lot, a lot more. Madueke needs to up his game a lot, a lot more. Sancho, you didn't just come here. To, to have, you know, a few assists. And, and a couple of those assists for, were, were just simple passes. You came here to make a difference. You need to do that. And Kunku, you're not just a conference league player. You need to, whenever you get that opportunity off the bench, impact. Impact all the time, all the time. I know, yes, Bournemouth, you got the winner. Thank you. That, that's how you need to be. Big games coming up. We need everyone to put in a shift and be a difference maker. And that's just people at the front, at the back as well. We need 
players to be a difference maker. No mistakes, especially from the likes of Levi Cole. I, I expect a lot from Levi Cole, so no mistakes, Levi Cole. Next up, Glenn Johnson picks Neto as a signing of the summer. He's not looked the best so far, but I do believe that Pedro Neto was the best signing of the summer. I'm looking forward to seeing him uh, get into top key. He has huge reputation and has, and was signed for a lot of money. We've already seen what he's capable of doing when he was at Wolves, but now we need to wait and see if he can do it at the top team. Look, Pedro Neto is one definitely knocking on the door. He's doing everything right to switch from the Conference League minutes that he's getting to Premier League minutes. I think this guy definitely needs to be looked at. Whether it's on the right, uh, left side, whether it's on the right side, I don't know. Maybe maybe you can take off Sancho and have Pedro Neto there and still continue with Medueca or maybe take off Medueca and put Pedro Neto there. One or the other, Pedro Neto needs to start featuring in the Premier League and have someone else in the conference league. I've got no issues with that. He's knocking on the door. He's asking the right questions when we play big, big matches in the Premier League. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, former Tottenham uh, <clears throat> physio Stephen uh, McAlee has joined Chelsea as the Blues continue to revamp their medical department. Mac uh, McAlee has been working at Red Bull's Athlete, uh, Athlete Performance Center in Salzburg for the last three years. So, Look, more revamping of the medical team, which is fantastic. Our medical team has been doing well uh, this season. And, um, yeah, look, whatever it takes to ensure that the players are consistently fit um, because we need that depth. We've got a lot of games coming up all over the, you know, all over Premier League, domestic cups, Conference League. We need a big squad to ensure that we can compete at the highest level. So if you want to keep revamping the medical room, which will enhance us, making sure that players stay fit, no problems. I've got no issues with that. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts about everything we spoke about. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, take care. See ya.